get ready, because today we're going to look at some scenes that no audience should have to look at. By the way, my name is Brandon McNulty. I'm the author of Bad Parts, also the author of Entry Wounds, and welcome to my writing channel. If you follow this channel, you know what good scenes do. They advance the plot, they develop characters, and they change story values, among other things. Now, today I want to talk about what bad scenes do, and the simplest way to break this down is by saying that bad scenes do one or more of the following. They insult the characters, they insult the story, Story, or they insult the audience. Now with that in mind, let's look at five types of bad scenes. I'll explain what they are, why they suck, and I'll give you an example of each. And here's your spoiler warning for today. The ones in red contain the heaviest spoilers. First type of bad scene is the overkill scene. And this is when a hero uses a ridiculous method to solve a delicate problem. And it's often a case of rushing or ignoring the obvious problem-solving steps. There might be a natural way to solve the problem that requires a few steps, but instead the heroes jump toward the end. They jump toward the final solution or they jump toward an extreme solution. And scenes like this, they hurt the story's believability and often you'll have these moments that disrupt the emotional impact of the scene. For example, let's look at The Hills Have Eyes. And this is a horror movie about a family road trip. And the plot here is pretty simple. A family gets stranded in the desert, they need to find help, and in the meantime, a bunch of mutants start creeping up on them. And at the midpoint, the mutants finally attack, and a series of sick and twisted things happen. The family then panics, and they get pulled in all different directions, and then there's a scene where one woman discovers that a mutant has taken her baby hostage. This is a major problem, and you'd probably expect the mother would try to find a way to rescue the baby while still ensuring the child's safety. But what actually happens, she slams a frying pan against the guy's head and sends him tumbling along with the baby. Now, I'll admit I admire her initiative here, but at the same time, this scene took me right out of the story. The action she takes is just plain reckless, and the mutant could have easily dropped or fallen on the child. And I'm no expert on dropping babies, but I know that even a fall from that height can cause serious injury or death. And the bottom line here is this. The mother's solution is way too extreme for the situation. If the mutant were holding a five-year-old or a ten-year-old hostage, then okay, yeah, use the frying pan. But with a baby, the mother should recognize the danger and then figure out a clever way to outsmart the mutant while still keeping the child safe. Second kind of bad scene is the should have been deleted scene. And this is a filler scene that serves no meaningful purpose in the story. It doesn't develop characters or advance the plot or create any meaningful change, and it distracts from the real story. And it ultimately wastes the audience's time. And oftentimes these types of scenes, there'll be comic relief for the sake of comic relief, action for the sake of action, or empty character interactions. For an example, let's look at Thelma and Louise. And this movie is about two friends who go on vacation together, and circumstances compel them to become outlaws over time. They commit crimes, they evade the police, and they have tons of fun in the process. And toward the end of the movie, there's a great scene where they get pulled over, and it looks like they're about to be arrested, but then Thelma surprises everyone by holding the cop at gunpoint. She stuffs him in the trunk of his car, and then the two continue on their journey. Later, they blow up a truck, and they get chased by the cops, and the story races toward its climax. Climax. Then, out of nowhere, we get a should-have-been-deleted scene. The movie cuts away from the high-stakes action and checks in on the police car. Turns out the cop is still trapped in the trunk, and some random guy on a bicycle shows up. The cop asks him for help, but he's like, nah, and it ends up being a comic relief scene that has no impact on the characters or the plot. And what's even more baffling is the placement and length of this scene. Not only does it appear right before the movie's climax, but it takes up more than a minute of screen time, which is a lot at this stage of the story. Third kind of bad scene is the idiot scene. And this is a scene where characters act dumb or uninformed in order to provide exposition, advance the plot, etc. And oftentimes you'll have events that feel staged and phony, and you might have dialogue that feels unrealistic. You might have those as you know Bob exchanges. As you know Bob, these things are going on in the story world right now. And these scenes are always insulting to the characters as well as the audience. For an example, let's look at Draft Day. And this movie is about the NFL draft, and it's a weird story because it has real NFL teams with fictional staff members and players. And it creates this strange disconnect, and it also means that the movie has to introduce a ton of characters and get their backstories down. Anyway, the plot follows a general manager as he tries to decide which player he wants to draft. Then, about midway through the movie, there's this goofy scene where he meets with his staff and they watch footage for two of the top players in the nation. Now, keep in mind, the staffers in the room are NFL experts who study players for a living. This is their job. They live and breathe this stuff. And yet, over the course of the scene, they act as though they've never watched some of the most hyped-up prospects in the nation. What's he doing? He got flustered. 
didn't wait for the play to develop. Not Bo's finest moment. Ooh. <laughs> oh, man, that is sick. He absolutely right? bull rushed that right tackle. Bo didn't even have a chance. Yeah, I gotta give it to the kid. He's got a wicked first step. Man, this kid is strong. That's impressive. That's pure Roethlisberger. He's pro ready. Now the whole purpose of this scene is to bring attention to how one player should be picked over the other. And that works as a scene goal. But the execution here feels phony. Everything from the dialogue to the character reactions to the info dumps, it's just insulting. Insulting to the characters, the story world, and the audience. Fourth kind of bad scene is the cheat code scene. And this is when characters face a problem, and instead of solving it by using their brains or teamwork or skills or something like that, the writers give them an easy out. And this often involves lucky or overly convenient solutions, and in the end it devalues the characters and makes them look stupid. I actually have two examples for this one, and the first comes from Toy Story 4. And if you remember, in this movie, when Buzz Lightyear faces a dilemma, he presses his red button, and the script tells him where to go or what to do. It's cheap, it's lazy, it insults an iconic character. Now another example comes from the animated movie Strange World. And this movie is about a group of explorers who go on a mission to save their planet. And after the main character and his family discover a shocking truth about their mission, they decide that they must put a stop to it. And that's when the story gets serious. The bad guys take the family and their blob friend and they throw them in a room and lock the door. And at this point the family has to beg their dog to help them escape. And this scenario is a lot like the trash compactor scene in Star Wars. You have a situation where the heroes are trapped and they have to rely on non-human allies for help. And that scene does a good job of mixing tension and humor in order to keep the audience engaged. But here in Strange World, they lean hard into comedy. So hard that it goes from funny to insulting. And what happens is, at first the dog tries to unlock the door while the family tries to coach him through it. That's totally fine, but after a few tries, the script decides to let the blob sneak outside, unlock the door, and then go back inside so the dog can take credit for unlocking the door. From there, the family escapes, and then everyone remembers to act serious because it's the final stretch of the movie. And I gotta say, this is one of the dumbest scenes I've ever watched. And look, I know the movie's target audience is kids, but that doesn't excuse this kind of writing. Just because kids are young doesn't mean they're stupid. And just because you're telling a lighthearted adventure story doesn't mean that the heroes don't have to solve their own problems. And then the fifth type of bad scene is the self-defeating scene. And this is a scene that promises high-stakes drama, but it delivers a safe and lazy resolution. These scenes often build serious emotion only to squander it, and they avoid creative risk. And they may involve things like plot armor, lucky coincidences, or contrived solutions. For an example, let's look at The Last Jedi, specifically the scene where Rose saves Finn. Now the setup here is actually great. The First Order is threatening to crush the Resistance, and Finn decides he'll do whatever it takes to destroy the enemy's weapon. And remember, Finn is a guy who was once a stormtrooper, and now he's trying to define himself once and for all by sacrificing his life to protect the Resistance. And that's a bold move, and once he makes his decision, it feels like a meaningful end to his character arc. But then, well, you know what happens. I saved you. Tell me, that's how we're gonna win. Not fighting what we hate. Saving what we love. Plain and simple, the outcome here sucks. It's safe, it's lazy, and it takes a powerful moment and completely squanders the emotion. You go from heroic sacrifice to ridiculous rescue, and what should have been a dramatic scene ends up as a clumsy and embarrassing one. So I hope this helps. Question of the day, what is the worst scene you've ever seen? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. If you want to support the channel, please pick up a copy of either one of my books and be sure to leave reviews on Amazon. Bad Parts is great if you like small town horror. It's about people trading away their sick and injured body parts in order to get healthy again. And then Entry Wounds is great if you like thrillers. And it's about a guy who picks up a haunted gun and he can't put it down till he kills six people with it. Also, be sure to check out my other videos, like, share, and subscribe. Maybe even hit that thanks button for me. And as always, remember to keep on writing.